Hello everyone. Welcome to the video lecture series of complex variable. I am Mayur Gohil. In this video lecture, I shall be dealing with Millen-Thomson method, which is very useful to find the analytic function f of z when we are given the real part or we are given the imaginary part. In either of the cases, Millen-Thomson method is very useful for us. So let us see how. When real part is given to us, we have this step number one, we write u equals to u x comma y. After that, we write the function f of z as u plus i v, which is an analytic function, okay. After that, we find the derivative u x and u y, the partial derivatives. Then we use the formula for f dash of z as ux plus ivx. Now this is the basic formula. From that because we are given the real part u x comma y, we use the formula ux minus i u y. Okay, this is the version of the formula that we had derived or we have understood from the Cauchy Riemann equations. Now I have just written this a little bit elaborately here. After this, step number four is relabeling these functions. ux equals to phi 1 x comma y and uy as phi 2 x comma y. Okay. When I relabel this over here, f dash of z turns like this. So phi 1 x comma y minus i times phi 2 x comma y. Now, Millen-Thomson method enables us to put x equals to z and y equals to 0. That is what the job of Millen-Thomson method is. So here f dash of z is phi 1 z comma 0 minus i times phi 2 z comma 0. Then, then in the next step we integrate both the sides in an ordinary way with respect to z. On integration we will get our final answer. Now let us see the same or a similar procedure for imaginary part when we are given the imaginary part how to find the function f of z which is analytic. So step number one will be it is almost analogous the way we did for real part you will see almost same steps are there slight change of notation and slight change in the formula. We would note down those formulas carefully and then we will be able to digest and solve the problems all throughout. So step number one is the imaginary part v is given to us. We write the function as f of z equals to ux plus iv, uh, ux comma y plus iv x comma y, okay, which is an analytic function. Then since the imaginary part v is given to us, we find the partial derivatives with respect to x and with respect to y. Now we use the formula as according to the partial derivatives that are found. So we get f dash of z equals to v suffix y plus i v suffix x. Okay. Once we have that, a little elaborate way it would become f dash of z is partial derivative of v with respect to y plus i times partial derivative of v with respect to x. Now comes the relabeling step. So vy will be labeled as psi1 and vx will be labeled as psi2. Okay. Now we get the function f dash of z in this manner that is equals to psi1 x comma y plus i times psi2 x comma y. Again Millen-Thomson method will enable us to put x equals to z and y equals to 0. So we obtain f dash of z equals to psi1 z comma 0 plus i times psi2 z comma 0. Again we integrate on both the sides in an ordinary way with respect to z we will get our final answer. Now the thing that is very important to note over here is the catch that here when we are doing the real part the formula we use is u 
x minus i u y okay that is what is very important and when we are given the imaginary part we use the formula v y plus i v x this is very important another thing is that this step of relabeling which is there this step is mostly as we practice more and more problems we realize that this step is not so much important it becomes redundant okay it is redundant step but i tell that initially we will follow this step later on once you get the mastery over the entire concept you can skip this step this step is essentially there because we have to do the relabeling part and for forming a computer algorithm kind of thing that that is why it is there otherwise there is no such great need for relabeling but let's see how to handle it now one another important thing since initially we will be involving in this step number 4 so what we have to remember is that whichever is the first derivative in the formula okay f dash of z whichever is a first derivative that one should be labeled as phi1 or psi1 okay so phi1 we will be labeling phi as the uh, notation we will be using for real part and psi as the notation we will be using for imaginary part purpose if we stick to the notation carefully and we understand this part then the whole mystery will be solved there is nothing great about it and this step itself at later stage we can delete it okay so this step please remember that it is slightly redundant it's not required but for sake of convenience or sake of simplification it is kept okay now uh, let me take you to another important aspect related to millen thomson method or the questions that are there we have just seen the two procedures very elaborate way so we are given that u x comma y is given to us we can find f of z okay so the method is millen thomson method will be used okay this is the method to be used okay and v x comma y is given again we follow the same way that we can get that but many times in examinations or some questions uh, are there where we see that they will be asking us that we need to find the imaginary part when the real part is given we need to find imaginary part so the only way out is we find f of z and then we go for v of x comma y so how that can be done so when the real part is given okay real part is given to us we can find f of z using millen thomson method over here and um then what we can do is we will use the following technique uh, that is we put f of z as u plus iv and z equals to x plus iy then we will do the collection of the real part and the imaginary part so we will get our imaginary part from that so this is the procedure here which will be involved so they will ask us find the uh, the imaginary part if the real part is this so the way to go out is we first use millen thomson method and then we get f of z from f of z we do the following substitution and we get the value for the imaginary part so that is how it is available 
now same way a year also it will happen that we will have the imaginary part given to us okay imaginary part b x comma y will be given to us then so we do use the millin thomson method okay so in short i am writing millin thomson method over here so you use that and then we find f of z once we find f of z we can then find u x comma y by substitution same way okay so this is what is very important and uh, this is what was there about the theory of finding the analytic function and the uh, analytic function when the real part is given or the imaginary part is given. So I hope you got the basics of the theory. I will soon see you in the next video lecture with the questions related to this topic. I hope you like the content and uh, have understood the procedure. Please hit like button, share it with your friends, those who find it useful. Subscribe to my channel. I will soon see you in the next video lecture. Thank you.